Hello, and welcome back to Pillars of Eternity. Apparently we can level up. So let's, let, let's put you some points into lore. Yeah, some into survival. And into stealth, apparently. Okay, let's go with the reduction or concentration of enemies. And that will be it for you. Mm -mm -mm. For you, I'll give you mechanics and athletics. Because why not? Um, confusion? Mm, could we? You have lots of spells. Maybe necrotic lands. Oh, I like that. Combusting wounds? Yes. <laughs> okay, let's go back to Gilded Vale. Okay, so here... Oh, once we are in the city, we can access the stash freely. Maybe we should walk around. To see if there's someone interesting. They were people standing there. Yeah, I'm gonna steal. The wooden woman is standing in front of the fireplace, humming a quiet tune to herself. Or perhaps to her unborn child, for she is clearly quite pregnant. She turns her head slightly as you enter. How do you do? Well, finally, I was starting to think. The one makes a startled noise once she turns around and sees you. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I was expecting someone else. She gives you a cautious smile. Can I help you? I just arrived in Gilded Vale. I thought I would get to know the locals. Were you with one of the caravans? She looks at you hopefully. Master Odemas, by chance. You knew Odema? Well, no more than most here, I'd say. He doesn't usually come this way, but they say he is a reliable old fellow. She poses bros far away. Wait, why did you say new? I'm sorry, but the caravan was attacked. I was the only one who to survive. Ulfra covers her mouth with a hand, eyes wide with horror. For a few moments she can manage nothing but a strangled, voiceless gasping, her eyes brimming with tears. I knew. <laughs> I, I told her it was a dangerous path to take. Kaliska was always so certain she could take on any danger. Oh, for sniffs. Oh, my poor sister. <laughs> I'm sorry, stranger, but I, I just... I can't believe she's gone. If only I hadn't called her here. If I hadn't written to her, she might still be alive somewhere. Ulfra's face crumbles, and solitary tears slide down her cheek. Kaliska mentioned that she thought you needed help. Perhaps I can provide some assistance. Ulfra looks at you with some surprise, before dabbling at her nose with a sleep. That's kind of you to offer, but I don't know if I could impose this on you. It's not a small favor. Ulfra wipes at her eyes. I'm worried about the baby, about the legacy. I told Kaliska as much as I could, but all I know is that for a long time now, every child born in Gilded Vale has been soulless, empty. It's happened to so many mothers, and Lord Rhetoric has exiled all of them, calling it a sign of the gods' disfavor. <laughs> she sniffs. With my hat or gun, I don't know how I would manage if I lost my home too. I hoped Kaliska could help me. They say Ranga, the old midwife, knows a way to prevent a child being hollowborn, but she moved south to Ensluk's compass two seasons ago. The journey is too far for me. I can't make it, it as I am, but I don't have anyone else now. <laughs> With Kaliska gone, more tears run down her face. Please, can you help me? I will find Ranga for you. 
or Fabling's eyes wide. You will? Oh, God bless you. Here, I'll, I'll give you a coin to pair with. You needn't trouble yourself with that. I think it's a drink she fashions out of... Well, I'm not sure. But it shouldn't be too much of a burden to carry back. Enslung's compass is what we call the lagoon to the south. You have to cross the wilds to get there. That's what keeps me from trying it myself. She clasps her hands together. Thank you again. Truly. You will be saving us both. She sets a hand on her stomach, smiling through her tears. The sworn dog-eared book is titled Travels Upon the Salt Glass Sea. There is an etched illustration of a vast, thin leviathan. I look at. You are just a villager. Let's see, is there anywhere else we can pay a visit? Maybe here. And I assume we will have to pay a visit to the mayor at some point as well. As you near, you feel a vibrant history contained in the essence of this woman's soul. You see a crowded marketplace, vendor stalls lining the road, the proprietor's voices calling out to passerby to come sample their wares. This woman wanders through the throngs, strolling hand in hand with another woman. They peruse the vendor's goods, towering at a book merchant with a number of old and beautiful tomes chatting with one uh, another about what they see. One will pick up a book and show it to the other who will take it, comment on it and place it back on its shelf. Then the first will snatch up the book again and quickly pay the merchant before the other can snatch it back. They walk away from the market weighed down by packs filled with books, still hand in hand, standing close, comfortable and familiar with each other. As they pass down a somewhat deserted street, an object suddenly hits this woman in the chest and bounces off, rolling away toward one of the buildings. The women stop and look at the object, an apple, and then back up at the person who threw it. There is nothing special about him aside from the angry look on his face and the two other apples he holds. Before either woman can move, the man draws back and throws another one at them this time hitting the second woman in the forehead. He yells at them something derisive and hateful, something about the legacy and about responsibilities. The woman raises her hand, head and wipes the juice and bits of fruit from her face and stares the man down defiantly. The first woman squeezes her hand and puts the other on her companion's shoulders, attempting to calm her down. The other woman pulls a book from her pack and holds it before her, muttering under her breath. She pulls her hand free and waves it above the book, an aura forming around her. The first woman is still trying to calm her down, but all she says goes on her. The man, uncaring of the events happening in front of him, draws back and throws the last apple. As it arcs through the air towards them, the second woman brings up her hand and points at the apple. A glowing orb of energy flies from her hand and strikes the apple, causing it to explode, raining bits of apple down on the road and buildings around them. The man's face changes, anger joined by fear, looking like he's trying to decide if running or attacking is the best course of action. The second woman has started chanting again, her hand glowing, her eyes narrowing. This woman steps in front of her, placing herself between her love and her attacker. She touches her face, gently stroking it while whispering calming words. A kiss. The woman's countenance changes. She calms, her eyes softening, her lips regaining the lost smile. The first woman smiles again as well and kisses the other. Wizard scum, the man behind them says the two and the two women turn to face him, staring him down defiantly. They join hands and begin walking again, moving past him without so much as a sideways glance. Let's not interrupt 
spellcasters, it usually ends poorly. I'm here. Oh, great. Okay, there's a lot of history of people here. And I don't think there is a reason for us to read all of that. I mean, it's, it is interesting. We know there's more grain in there, Trumbull. We won't settle for scraps while you grow fat on our crops. A muffled shouting emerges from inside the mill. The first of you dark cards come through that door and gets a shot between the eyes. God hear me, three or no. I'll put you down like a dog. Come away from for now, lads. We'll be back. Trumbo and we will have fair prices. Or by the flame we'll have a reckoning. They really do have some issues, don't they? And I see some mushrooms we can pick up. Yeah. An elven man stands before you, his relatively stocky build suggesting a life of labor. His face is pale and drawn, and his eyes wide. Behind him, a younger man and woman exchange worried glances. The miller raises a club as you enter. It shakes violently in his grip. Get back, if you value your life. Hold on, I'm not here to hurt anyone. The miller hesitates, then lowers the club. Wait, I know you. You just came into town, right? Don't tell me Swainer's already got his claws into you. Gods, that's all I need. Um, my name is Evna, and... Right, I've just arrived in Gilded Vale. Trumbull shakes his head. You picked a bad time to come visiting. Gilded Vale's got all its shine scraped off. There's a big dung heap now. And Swainer thinks he's king of it. They're all of them mad. What was all the trackers outside? Tambor shakes his head. Where to begin? Swainer whipped them up into a froth going on about the grain stores. Claims I've hidden away most of it. All I do with the grain is sell it. I can't create it out of thin air, and I can't hand it out for free. I pay the farmers for the crops they bring in, and I sell what comes out of the mill. Most of it goes to the Black Hound, on the west side of town, for ale, and Swainer and his lot shouldn't mind that part. You take a look at the fields on the way into town, the crops blighted, and most of what I'm getting from the farmers, <laughs> them trumbled gestures to the second containers, is gone off, rotten through. I can't pay top prices for blighted wheat, and I've barely got enough good grain to grow around. <sighs> Swainer's howling after things he has no right to. Seems like a pretty clean story for a messy situation. Tom Trumbull frowns. It's, it's not. Look, Swainer's always been a rotten bastard. We've stores so limited. Maybe I have the good, I save the good stuff for people who deserve it. Alpha, for instance. She's expecting a child. Should I let her stare, starve instead? Maybe I ought to have a talk with Swainer then. The miller all but sags with relief. I'll be grateful if you did. He won't listen to me anymore. But maybe you'll have better luck. Tell him we're all having a hard time of it, and we'll have all have to make some sacrifices. We'll be in your debt for it, if you can convince him. Good day to you. Um Okay. So apparently we cannot ask him anything new yet. So now we will just walk around, meet people of the city, town, see some cows, nameless villagers, we can enter here as well. The 
Black Hammer Smithery. Ooh. This Aum Aumawa man is a, of impressive build, towering above the countertop. His skin is the dusky blue of the deeper oceans, and his thick arms boast corded muscle. Small ears, famous square jawed face, coated in smeared suit, and arcing back black tattoos like. He offers you a broad smile as you approach. Welcome. You're the first new face I've seen in quite some time. What can I do for you? What? Is this your shop? That it is. Been here near on 20 years now. Seen all manner of things over the years. Good luck and bad. Tautano glances at the guard standing watch along the wall, but the black hammer's memory remains. What do you have here? You come to us at a strange time, I'm afraid. The stock's not what it used to be. But we find weapons and armor to offer yet. All forged right here at the Black Hammer. What happened? We just don't have the supplies. Been expecting the next delivery for near on a week now, and haven't seen a sign of it. Have to expect they were hit by bandits. The road out east is crawling with them. Or my workers run off with the wake and themselves, maybe, to make some coin. Tautam snorts, as if that lot would dare. He's right about the bandits. The dire situation in villages like this and the exodus of the cities has created far too many opportunities for unscrupulous sorts. Tautanus scratches his jaw, thinking, if you happen to be headed that way, maybe you could keep an eye out for a supply wagon. Or my shipment, at least. They would be cutting through the black meadow, meadow, I expect. Only good road for it. As it is, most of our weapons go to his grace, Lord Redrick. Tautan glances at the nearby guard, and that's as it should be. But it doesn't leave much for outsiders. We don't, we just don't have enough. We just don't have the iron. I will see them back safe and sound. I would appreciate your trying, anyhow. You bring back the supplies, at least, and I'll have much more to offer you. A discount to start. And if you do find my workers, you give them a, a good smack upside the head for me. Sure. We have to go to Black Meadow either way to look for Merwald. Merwald? I think I have no idea what I've written here. I think it's Merwald. Despite the rains, the stalks feel as dry and stiff as a locust husk. I believe we can also enter into the ruins, I would love to do that. But first let's... Let's deal with everything in here, okay? <laughs> I'm also looking for that... Guy. Okay. Hello. And welcome today. Thank you, Brooksep. Oh, it's you! Tenfrith told us what you did for him. It's such a relief to have him back. I can't thank you enough. Consider yourself a favorite of the house. Discounts on drinks, rooms. Tenfrith said he wanted to whip up something nice for you. He's already back to work in the kitchen. She laughs. So, what would you like? I could use some reliable help. Do you know any of anyone looking for work? Mm hmm? Uh, oh, oh, well, I wouldn't say I can speak from experience, but we do have certain sorts coming by looking for work from time to time. If you want to hire someone on, I'd be happy to send them your way. Hmm, maybe later. Oh, it's you, my savior! He makes a sweeping gesture to indicate the kitchen around you. It's so good to be back! 
Do not think I will let this go unrewarded. I have decided that you have earned the right to learn one of my closely guarded secrets, my dearest recipe. After this, you will eat nothing else. A savory pie to keep you hale and hearty might serve you well in your travels. Thank you. Uh, although I am looking for a sweet or there, there you are. You bastard. Well met, friend. Don't know who you are and don't care much. Keep walking. We're not here to chat with foreigners. I love Narcy's eyes. Careful. Looks like they're cut from the same cloth as the Saraudis who attacked me. He wrinkles his nose. Smells like it too. I saw you outside of the mill. What was that about? Well, someone fancies themselves a meddler, eh? What's that about? It's about Trumbler when he is king of the town on account of he's got the mill to his name. The dwarf's jaws quiver with rage. It's about him barely giving us anything for the wheat we bring him and then cutting our purses when we need to buy grain. It's about farmers going hungry or some bastard gets rich of their crops. That's what it's fucking about. Now show off! What if I buy you all round? Will you talk to me then? Swainer considers. Briefly. He looks to the others. Fair enough. You bring us something to it our throats. And might be I'll fill up the trading wards. Hey. Welcome. I would like to buy a round for the fine fellows over there. Fine fellows? You're having on me. Any more fighting and I'll have to ban Sweeno from the inn entirely, the innkeeper frowns. Until then, it's six copper piece for the lot. Here you are. Right then, here. Three drinks for the three fools. Just take care of them. They are a hot-tempered bunch. God's key. You again. Who do you want now? I brought drinks. Hey, so you have. By the flame, I never thought I would be so happy for a mug of Blackhound's shit beer. God, that's good. Alright, then. You've got my attention. What is it you've got to say that's worth a round of drinks? Maybe you could tell me more about what's going on. It's like I said. The miller's in charge of the grain prices. He says they're fair, but I know for a fact that folks like Ofra pay half what we do. The dwarf sighs. And maybe we've been a bit rough with him. But what are we supposed to do? We can't keep paying, we're going to starve. And do you think Trumbler is going to be sorry about it when we do? Hmm. Maybe I could go talk to Trumbler for you. <laughs> you think you'll get through to him when we haven't? The man's thick as peat bog. I hear we got his soul red. Uh, found his skin used to grow sun or trees for their there's uh, Adrian lords up until they figured out their side was losing. Explains why his knees still ache to bend to whatever lord or lady crosses the road. He'll be holed up in that mill for days, the coward. The dwarf eyes it consideringly. But here, if you want to give it a shot, then good luck. We'll owe you one if you manage it. I don't want to fight them. Really? I don't see any reason to fight them. I would like to beat them to a pulp because it would not be a fair fight. We'll go in there. Next time, probably. How do you do? Tremble nods a court greeting. You're back. Have you had any luck with Swinger? I spoke to him. And what did he say? He says you're treating the farmers unfairly, raising prices and giving them more than rain. <laughs> of course he does. He's been saying nothing else for days now. The man's delusional. If he wants grain, he'll have to pay for it. 
What's going on here, anyway? Trumbler shakes his head. Where to begin? Sweeney swept whipped them up into a froth going on about the grain stores. Claims I've hidden away most of it. All I do with the grain is sell it. We've been through that. Do the villagers know about the grain supply? Trumbler looks embarrassed. Some. The innkeeper, for instance. It's better not to worry anyone. I'll be trading for supplies soon enough. If you can just keep things calm until then, we'll be in the clear. The innkeeper? Trembler winces. I wouldn't drink the ale, is all I'm saying. Ooh. How do you do? I had more questions about this whole situation. Nothing, apparently. Good day to you. Hmm. You are selling rotten grain, rotten beer. Well, thank god we didn't drink it. some more about the Black Hound. Really? Well, let me see. The actual building been here for years, but the Black Hound's fairly new. We get a, a lot of new faces in here, too. Fewer than we used to, I'll admit. Tenfriff's a bit the big draw. I'm sure he'll get the big crowds back again in no time. I used to work tables, actually, until the old owner left and le left. Nobody's sure what happened to him. He even left his poor hound behind. That's the name, I see. The Black Hound? It's still sitting upstairs, pining after him. Poor old girl. Placing it up in my hands somehow. <laughs> my very own inn. A lot of hard work involved, but it's been worth it so far. Hmm. God's keep. Yeah, it's you again. What is it? You are a drunken menace. And I'm putting it down. Swainor stumbles up out of his chair, eyes wide, and his fellows draw their weapons. At her lads! You please cast... Something. Necrotic lance? Yeah, sure. I thought we would put the, the knock them out, not kill them all. Oh well, anyway, they won't be an issue anymore. But please do not kill any more farmers. Hail and well night. Mm, you're back. Have you had any luck with Swinor? He's dead. He won't be troubling you anymore. The mule blinks awkwardly. Dead? But he shakes his head. N no, I, I won't ask. I suppose I shouldn't take this as good news, but when a man threatens your family. In any case, I thank you for letting me know that is. And here, as a token of appreciation, he weighs out some coins in his hand and presses them into your palm. Perhaps now we'll stand a chance of getting this town back on its feet. I imagine it's not... It's not even a good... 
outcome of this situation, but it's my outcome. Either way, I'm gonna end this part here, so for now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye.